Hello everyone! AI video frame interpolation. This is something fun using two images to create a new video clip. So, WAN 2.1 released their first and last frames model recently. We decided to check it out. This is supposed to improve performance or, I can say, have better results compared to the WAN Fun InPaint model for first and last frames video generation. As you can see in this demo, both the first and last frames from most of their examples here aren't really correlated. But of course, in ComfyUI, when you run this locally, there's going to be a lot of trial and error. Also, keep in mind that all these demos are cherry-picked based on what they've selected as the best examples for the video demo here. So we're going to try it out soon and see how it looks in a real situation. First of all, we're going to check out the model weights on Hugging Face. Now this is a 14 billion parameter size model with 720p resolution. So this is a pretty large model size for running AI models locally, and as you can see, because this is in 720p, you're going to render higher resolutions, more than the 480p way resolution images to videos or text to videos models we've tried out before. Now we have this model integrated natively into Comfy UI, so we don't have to download any extra custom nodes or wrappers to run it. All you need to do is update your latest Comfy UI version and go to the comfyui.org repositories for WAN 2.1. There you'll find this list of models where you can see the WAN 2.1 FLF2V. There's another model that was just released in the last hour, the FP8 model. I downloaded the FP16 model to try it out, but the FP16 file size is quite large. Here we're seeing this one is 32 gigabytes of storage, while the FP8 is 16 gigabytes. So pick whichever one is suitable for your hardware. Just be realistic with yourself. If you're working with low RAM, you shouldn't pick the FP16 to run it. You can try out the GGUF quantization model, who compiled all the quantized sizes of the first and last frames to video model weights from WAN 2.1. I've tried the last one here, which is the 14B720PQ 8GGUF model. The file size is about 18 gigabytes, but still, even though I'm using the Q8, I don't see the quality matching what's shown in the demo of the first and last frames to video model weights on their official Hugging Face page. And so therefore, I'll just give a link in the description to this GGUF page. It's your choice. You can download it if you want to try it out. First, we're going to check out how to run this. I've set up a very simple workflow example here to run this start and end frames process. First of all, we need two images, of course. We have to resize those images to match the same width and height for both images before we pass them into the sampling process. Just bear in mind that this is again a 720p resolution. If you have, you know, high-end computer settings, you can even set the width and height to 1280 by 720p. This will generate a landscape ratio for the videos. Otherwise, you can go with lower resolutions, which would be 832 for the width and 480 for the height. I'm going to set it to 480 for the height. This way, we'll generate a smaller size and it will obviously render faster for our video. If you want to do a portrait style video, like the example I'm showing here, you can switch the width and height numbers around to match the portrait orientation. Then we move up to the sampling process. This is the important part of the first and last frames to video workflow. We have these native nodes in Comfy UI. As you can see, after updating to the latest version of Comfy UI, you can search for first last frames to video. You'll see the name here and once you select it, you can choose this node. As you can see, I've already connected this node. The width and height will match our input image dimensions, so I'm using one setting from these integer numbers and passing that to the native nodes here to ensure the same settings for all the width and height values we need for the clip visions, and then the image input. We're going to use two pairs of settings, sending data from the clip visions and the image as well. So, as you can see, there's a start image and an end image. Each clip vision and image data requires two pairs, meaning both images. From here, we're sending the image data, and we also have the clip visions and code. We're using the same clip visions model, which is the clip vision H used for 1.2.1. Once we have this connected, basically, it's ready to go for the input parameters. The VAE we are using is the 1.2.1 VAE, same as before. 
Then, the negative and positive prompts work just like usual. What we typically do for text encoding for the input, positive, and negative prompts. Here, I have the sampler using the very basic sampler nodes, setting the CFG to 5, the sampler name to UniPC, and the scheduler to normal. I tend to use fixed seed numbers here because I don't want to regenerate every time I change something at the end of the video or add another feature to this workflow. So try that with these settings. I also have the when enhanced video node from the KJ nodes. It's not really necessary to use this node. I can see that because I downloaded the FP16 and the first and last frames model weight is already high resolution. So we don't need that as a necessity. But if you're aiming for perfection, you can try it out for enhanced videos as well. The TCache and layer skip layer guidance I put as optional. I see that this model doesn't really need the skip layer guidance or TCache as a necessity. Again, if you're running on low and want to make it faster, then of course you can try that. Otherwise, just pass it through with the normal model to the sampler. I think it's good enough. I've also added the GGUF model loader here in case you want to use the GGUF quantization model. Then you can switch the model input from here to connect with these connection lines here. If not, just bypass this node and use the load diffusions model. Get the safe tensor files up and running here. And basically, that's going to be the whole setup for how you do it. As you can see, this one I generated using two images that I tried with using Killwind 2.5 to help me create a prompt using these two images. So this is the first image, and then this is the last image. The DJ is playing music, mixing some music in this party room here. It actually helped me generate a lot of stuff, and I just cherry-picked whichever actions I needed to animate this video. I found out that even if the images aren't too correlated, it's still able to create pretty smooth transitions between the start image and the end image, just like what they show in the examples where you see the first example here. Totally two different images. It's able to predict what's happening in between and generate very smooth transitions, like going down into the water and then zooming into another underwater world scene. Then we get another transition. Now, this transition, I've caught on to a lot of generations in my testing in Comfy UI. If you have something that's too obviously different and the AI can't predict what kind of thing it is, it will suddenly shift the camera to the last frame's related environment. Then, the last frame will use your input last frame image as the ending of the video. This happens a lot with first and last frame transitions, like the frame interpolation framework. But with 1, 2.1, they've tried to make this smoother in the transitions. So therefore, even in examples like this, where I have similar styles of images, both using the same character here, although there are slightly different angles, the AI does a lot of stuff in between those frames. It plays the music and adds cheerful dancing moments in between, making the whole video transition smooth, going from the start to the end frames. Another example I'll show is using the same character but with two images in landscape view. So we can see how it performs in another dimension, like the width and height settings here as well. We're going to try the next one. I also have another workflow setup that's more advanced using Tile LoRa. I've added the Tile LoRa that we've tried before to enhance our existing or generated videos and then upscale that using the upscaler by image. By default, I set it to 1.5 times. So I think in this setup, it will take a lot more time for rendering. If you want to try it out faster, I suggest going with 1.2 times. Just set it to a slightly higher resolution and make the image blur suitable for the tile LoRa to identify as a tile. And then we do the rendering here. I've also added Sage Attentions and Tcash, whichever you prefer to try. It's not necessary to use Tcash or Sage Attentions here. It's all optional stuff. So if you don't have Sage Attention installed, you can just bypass these groups. 
and it will go through here to the model's file data, processing the video at the end. And just like this example here, where I have the elf standing near the river, but this one isn't a perfect transition. It has a sudden change of frames to another frame, but that's how most first and last frame or interpolation models work if you don't have two correlated characters, especially in terms of character positions, environments, or camera angles being very different. Most of the time, they'll do these sudden frame transitions. I've tried another example where I had the first frame with the same character here, doing a transition of talking, and then the camera goes in another direction, keeping the same female character I generated. But it's, you know, adding its own creativity to do the transitions like that. The frame interpolations in between, we can't control all these durations. You know, we don't have a control net or anything to control these in-between transitions, so therefore, just let it have its own creativity. All we can do is use text prompts to control whatever we can within that duration. Another second try, I have this image as the first frame and this image as the last frame. I didn't expect a smooth transition here. I expected something like movie shots with different views, and it did help me achieve that. But I personally don't prefer this kind of transition where there's a sudden change of the whole video scenes like that. There are two more samples I generated before. One of them uses a pretty close correlation between the two images. The first frame goes to the last frame, which is this image here. So I just did a prompt saying something like, here, we have a female warrior holding up a sword in front of her face with confidence. Therefore, it generates you know, using those two images as frames. And then I did something like this. It looks okay, not top quality, but at least the AI knows that this is the same person, the same character, and the whole video is based on this character. Then it goes forward to her holding up the sword and facing the camera like this. Another one that gave me some surprise this time is a woman working at her desk transitioning to a totally different position and composition where she bends down and picks something up off the ground. It came from this image as the start frame and this image as the end frame. As you can see, it's totally two positions and almost two different backgrounds. This time, the AI did some pretty cool things, you know, walking all the way down here and picking something up off the ground, maybe a pen that fell like that. The whole transition here rendered pretty smoothly. It surprised me that the AI model allowed for that. So yeah, we're going to try that with another image using this DJ here as the first frame and this one as the last frame in this generation. I'm also going to add this tile upscale group and see how that looks for the output result. I'm going to append that below the workflow here so we have an easier way to see the videos generated from here. Well, we can use frame interpolation to have smoother transitions if you prefer to, but sometimes you don't need to. It's an optional thing again. Right here, we're going to try with the tile upscale. Yeah, let's just see how that looks. So we got the generated result here, and I also did two results in the tile LoRa groups where I set the image blur to 10 for the first try. So here, I just put a mark here to remember. This is for image blur 10, and this one that just generated is image blur 15. There's of course some difference between the two results for different image blurs. Now let's check out the first result generated from the first and last frame sampling. You see two different angles of the image and the same character background. The windows are going to be different. Now uh, something very interesting about this AI model is that it can tell the different angles of the character and then turn to the last frame like facing towards the character at 12 o'clock. You see some lighting color changes because it mentions in the text prompts where the DJ is doing music in the party. It might be that effect. The AI thinks this is in a party room, so it adds some LED lighting colors and effects to the room temperature. Also, as we zoom into this one full page shot, it's pretty creative. This AI model from the start frame slowly transitions and can tell us the angles are going from 3 o'clock of the character to 12 o'clock of the character. Well, it can think and predict what's in between these frames. It's just like how people create stories or fill in content between two points. The same concept applies to these predictions. It fills in the content between those two images. Very creative on this one. 
Although this isn't the top-notch best generation, you can see how it reacts if you have two images with different angles or some other more obvious totally different correlations that will be able to create some stories like this. Pretty creative. And then, the next processing step in this workflow is the tile upscale, which I talked about before. But I suggest that, for low VRAM users or beginners with Comfy UI, just don't use this at this moment. Once you get familiar with the sampling steps here, focus on getting the first and last frame right first. Then, move on to tile upscale or whatever method you want to use. Yeah, this one will be more experimental. I tried it with the Patreon group people on Discord and did this tile upscaling stuff. So you can see the resolution is, well, I upscaled the image 1.2 times, as I said before in this video. Then we have more color variations. I tend to see that the LoRa tile LoRa makes higher contrast for the colorations in all the generated videos using this PI LoRa model. So it's up to you. If you want higher contrast, it's usable but not always usable. Like if you want a soft, relaxed kind of video motion, you don't want a high contrast like that. Yeah, so it depends on your situation. But so far, this is another try using Image Blur 10 and generating another result like this. So yes, so far, this is how it works using the first and last frame. And I see that the quality obviously outperforms the one fun in pain models we talked about previously for frame interpolations. Although I'm using just the FP8 model type this time, it's still producing better start and end frame videos. Videos like this look pretty fun to play around with. So this is the new release of the first and last frames to video, 14B, 720p model from WAN 2.1. I'll see you guys on the next one. Have a nice day. See ya.